Okay. So the fifth dimension, the, the dimensions, I spent a lot of time studying theoretical physics and trying to understand the relationship between um, regular dimensions, spatial dimensions, and um, and these new age dimensions that everybody in new age communities is talking about, because I think they're totally valid. And, um, and I've seen that, I'll try to explain my basic understanding of dimensions first so that we can have a better understanding as we move forward in this conversation um, is a unifying principle between um, between the spatial dimensions and new age dimensions and how we understand them. So spatial dimensions just means that uh, the first dimension is a point, the second dimension is a line, it's a flat plane, um, and the third dimension has an added um, height. So that's, you know, that's what we live in. It's the third dimension. Everything you can have a sphere instead of a just a circle on a um, on a page, and the um, the fourth dimension is commonly known as time. Time, from what I understand, is not actually the fourth dimension. It's just how we experience the fourth dimension. So if you ever have read Flatland and they talk about anything passing through. Um, the second dimension, let's say a sphere passes through the second dimension, well, to the second dimension, it's going to look like a pinpoint that then grows and then shrinks again, right? Because it's a sphere and it's being experienced by a dimension that is actually flat. So it's going to go and it's going to, as it goes through, it's only going to get slices of that and of that energy. Um, and so when you look at something from a higher dimension interacting with something from a lower dimension, we can start to conceptualize that it's only going to be a partial experience of the fullest um, of the fullest reality. So when we have time as the fourth dimension, then it's going to actually, in its fullest form, just like a sphere in the third dimension is different than a circle that grows and shrinks again on a flat plane. Time is looks different to us in the third dimension than it looks to the fourth dimension. As we go up into spatial dimensions and we look at spatial reality and we say, well, the fifth dimension is just an added, an added point and then the sixth dimension is an added point. And it gets really hard to conceptualize of. Um, this is because we are entering into a state of, of emotional realities. And actually emotions are tapping us into um, other dimensions. So we can experience infinite dimensions on the third dimension, but we're just experiencing them as um, as little pieces, as little parts, as whatever we can experience them from our perspective. Okay, we're going to get into this in a little bit. I have some, um, I have some diagrams for us. So the um, as we ascend on this planet, it's commonly said that we're ascending from the third to the fifth dimension. The way that we understand this is um, that the fourth dimension. Okay, so let's let me just show you my diagram here. I don't know if Instagram's going to be able to see this, but we'll do our best. Okay. Let me try just giving them a little bit of a chance here. Okay. Okay, so this is our diagram of um of our realities. And this is this is the, this is earth, okay? This is like this is uh, this is the universe actually. This is like everything that any being can experience. Do you guys want to come in here instead of barking? Please don't bark. Okay. Okay. So, unconditional love and freedom is that's at the top of the spectrum here. That's like the highest energy that we can possibly reside in. That includes aliens and everybody like unconditional love and freedom and like respect for all. And just th this is, this is representative of the highest, the highest energy. 
down here and below, we have fear and pain-based reactions. So rather than think of this as, um, as you know, specific dimensions, we could probably say like this, like, like the red and orange is kind of like the third dimension, yellow and green is like the fifth dimension, and then the blue is like, um, or the, the fourth the fourth dimension, yellow and green is like the fourth dimension. And then like this blue area is like the fifth dimension. Then we go up into like seven to 10 dimensions, um, theoretically. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about your emotional reality and your internal state. So you as a being, you radiate out energy and this energy that you radiate out allows you to communicate with other beings on the same spectrum. Also, the energy that you reside in is going to be the energy of your capabilities and your mind state. So if you are this person and you are, you're rising up above the fear and pain-based reactions and you're going up into closer to unconditional love and freedom, you're going to be on this spectrum. And that's so cool because you're going to be experiencing the things in this reality. On Earth right now, we have a huge range. Most planets, most places, the whole planet would be on this strip right here because the whole planet is going to be rising up at the same time. Earth right now is going through a period of great transition. So the amount of difference between our lowest and our highest is bigger than is comfortable. And that's why we're all uncomfortable. That's why it feels so insane. And that's why everything feels like it's falling to pieces and, and insane because it is. We're actually in this huge spectrum of energy on earth. So wherever you reside, this is the type of energy that you're going to be getting. Maybe this is the, these are the type of people that you're going to have in your life. Let's look at the next one. So if you have somebody who's um, a little bit higher up than you, you can still interact with them because they're still going to be in that same bandwidth of frequency. So what I'm talking about is you're going to have people who are, um, this is, this is someone who can like teach you something, or this is someone who, you know, who's just in a little bit higher place as far as unconditional love and freedom. Now, all, all different states are divine and don't, don't think like, oh, it's like, I only can be in one state or another state. It's okay to, navigate this entire spectrum. I feel like the more you understand the fear and pain and, and your, your shadow side, this is your platform to stand on. Once you have this all figured out and all sorted out and you, and you can love it, you can actually send love to your shadow. It acts as a platform for you to stand on and you can actually rise up with it. It's your strength, you know? So it's like having really good shoes on, you know, it's just like, it's a really good foundation when you actually heal it. And I don't mean ignore it. I don't mean repress it. I mean, look at it and heal it. How can you do this? You have to do your shadow work. Doing shadow work is something that I haven't talked about a lot in Unicult. It's, um, it's new to me and I'm working on creating content for us. Um, and working with Kuan Yin. And if you have a chance to work with Kuan Yin and you feel called to work with your shadow, I highly recommend working with Kuan Yin. It's just K-W-O-N-Y-I-N on Instagram. She actually has taught me so much about this. Um, so the way that Kuan Yin teaches it is that when we have negative emotions, then we enter into, um, we, can, we can use that as a portal to learn more about ourselves because all of our negative emotions are valid. They're trying to tell us something like um, that we've been hurt or that we need more protection or that we need to not be in that situation anymore or um, all of that. We should, um, Spencer asks, should we meditate ourselves into the fear and pain level? No, I would say that it's gonna come up. You know, sometimes things are painful physically painful, emotionally painful, things come up that are uncomfortable. You don't need to go specifically chasing after them because this is life on earth. Um, things are going to happen. So as you feel that energy and you analyze it and you say, this is valid, why am I feeling this way? And you give credit to it because I think a lot of us, we have negative feelings and we say, uh, screw that. I don't want to feel that way. I'm going to just ignore it. And that's kind of been my teachings in Unicult. So um, that does work for a certain period of time, but eventually you have to do your shadow work. 
So as you rise up into this place, you're going to be communicating with people who are on the similar the similar frequency as you. Um, now look at this diagram. If you have done a lot of work and you're very high up and you're cl very close to free and you have unconditional love and freedom, what do you think you're going to look like to this person who's down here? They, they might see you, but they're not going to see you because they are not even close to sharing this same frequency band. So they're in their own frequency. When you when when someone who's stuck in fear and pain sees someone who's free, they oftentimes will lash out and attack or make fun of or belittle or call someone delusional or something like that. Because, um, yeah, like a revolutionary or a threat to the status quo, someone who is who is free is not going to look like anything to people who are stuck in fear and pain-based reactions. Now, someone maybe who's a little bit higher up, who's sort of crossing into that threshold, who's maybe like someone who normally lives in fear and pain, but can like see higher, then they can, they can generally understand. Um, someone asked if Jeremy is in a lower frequency than me, and I say no, definitely not. Jeremy and I are twin flames, so we're the same usually. We each are dealing with our own version, but um, we each have our own darknesses and um, and we, we both rise up at a rapid pace. It's incredible. Um, yeah, so they'll think that this person is just crazy and um, that's all true. It's not true that they're crazy, but it's true that they'll feel that way. So let's look at what it's actually like, right? This might be a day, this might be a month, this might be a year for you, depending on your emotional sensitivity. If you have mental illness, this might look like a single day. If you are a relatively stable person, this might look like a year where, you know, you got a promotion and then someone in your family passed away and then, you know, who knows, different external sources might have this effect on you. But there is the potential to be on this very wild roller coaster of going up and down on this spectrum of, of this is the spectrum of joy, okay? Another thing I really want to mention, you guys, is that there are only limited levels of darkness. Darkness only goes so low. The lowest you can go in darkness is, is evil, you know, hurting other people and hurting yourself at the same time. Um, and you can get quite depraved doing that. Um, low, low, as low as you can go is non-existence, which is not really even low. It's like outside of the system completely. And it's not even really possible because all things are conscious. So how low can you really go? This is what this is what I discovered when I was overcoming depression. I had explored the most depressing reality that I could possibly imagine. And I had resided in that energy for a long time and it didn't lead anywhere. It was just it just stayed there. And it was just that just would have been my life if I had just stayed there. It's just depression and then wanting to die. On the other side of it, there are infinite levels of light. As we rise up into unconditional love and freedom, like this is the top of the visible color spectrum, purple, but you can actually go above that and go into the next harmonic frequency where you're actually even higher up than you are on this chart and you go even higher up into a higher state of being to where you're purely divine, okay? So that that's really our goal and not even our conscious ego goal, but that's just the progression of life. That's just how, just like a seed sprouts and grows towards the light, so do we. Everybody who gets a taste of the light wants it more. Um, Spencer says, so we rise and fall. Is it possible to stop falling? Yes. So this is normal, but I don't say it's, I don't, and, and it's fine because we're in this state of huge progression. So don't, don't feel bad that you go through these things, but do know that solidifying a band of energy and harmonizing your internal state will actually create a stable platform for you to remain in this higher way of being. So I think a lot of times when we're in this state, 
It's like we get up here and we want to be here, but then we fall down and then we climb back up and then we fall down and then we climb back up. And it's a lot of work and that needs to be learned. And we need to learn how to navigate this spectrum, especially if you're someone who's gifted with mental illness, because you're going to be someone who's very sensitive and you're actually being called to be an expert in this field. Okay, so whatever your mental illness is, if you have bipolar or borderline or narcissist personality disorder or schizophrenia or any of these things, this that's your path to master. And that's for a reason. That's a, it's a gift. And when you master this whole range, you're going to be much stronger and you're going to be able to help other people navigate to get to this higher platform of understanding. So. The other thing I want to talk about is spiritual and angelic communications. If you are um, down here, let's say, any, this is spirits, angels, and demons are all the same as, um, as people. Okay. So if you're in this band of energy, you're going to be interacting like your friends and your family and the people around you are going to be generally speaking in the same frequency as you are. When you truly dedicate yourself to staying in a higher frequency, you will then attract people like that in your life. Um, and because you naturally, you set boundaries and people who are not rising up fall away and it just goes on like that. Um, being detached from external events, not indifferent, keeps one in that solid state. Yes, that's a beautiful way to say it. So you're not attaching to outcome. Yeah, how do you do that is a good question. And I feel like Magic Shadow brought um, a really good point about non-attachment um, and especially um, saying not indifference because, and the, the way that I have found this non-attachment is to let go and let God I, I think that's actually a phrase, right? So I just assume that the divine, and I, me, I, I'm called to do this every day. It's fucking hard. I have a strong ego. I'm a Leo. I, I'm a visionary. I see things how they should be. And the divine plan is constantly telling me that that's not actually how it should be. And things that I think I can hold are taken away from me. And things that I don't want are coming towards me. And it's the path does not look like I would write it. And that's okay because I have to trust in the divine plan and I have to let go of attachment to outcome. So when I do that, then I'm trusting in the divine plan and I'm not going to get as negative feeling as this person, right? So a lot of times it's attachment is what causes us to fall because we're expecting something to... Um, to work out in a certain way and it doesn't and that's okay okay aliens when we're talking to aliens if we're down here an alien can't reach us they're stuck in their own frequency bands as well if they're a high up alien if you're down here and you're next to fear and pain based reactions and you're having spiritual experiences you're going to be having spiritual experiences with with demons and with other trickster spirits who like to encourage and maintain fear and pain based reactions because they're stuck in that same frequency band as well. That doesn't mean that guardian angels and other beings aren't watching you. It just means that they're not going to be able to communicate with you because they can only go so low. So sometimes if you're feeling like alone, you need to actually, and this happened to me my whole life. I was down here and my guides were up here and they had to wait for me to naturally figure it out and pull myself up till I was barely touching the bottom of their lowest frequency. And then we were able to communicate. Okay. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, we're going to talk about symptoms now of um, ascending into the fifth dimension and what that means. So as we ascend into the fifth dimension, it's very uncomfortable. And um, there's a lot of things that happen that, um, that aren't necessarily pleasant. Some of this is the physical sensations of feeling, um, feeling sick or feeling um, feverish or having headaches or having chills or having um, sort of like little like flu symptoms even. Uh, sometimes 
when you think you're sick, you're actually just going through an ascension. Another thing would be that as you're going to sleep at night, you're going to be hearing things like knocks on your walls or taps, um, and you will experience um, nights where you wake up remembering nothing and nights where you feel like you went really far away. And um, there's just a lot that's happening. There's Sometimes you'll wake up with new information. Sometimes you'll be um, totally rejuvenated. And sometimes you'll be exhausted. There's a lot that happens in our sleep on the astral planes. Um, we have to get used to never getting out of our way. I would say just always getting out of our way. <laughs> always. Because we, our hearts know the, the way to the highest self. Okay, we have a whole discussion on the Torah and Buddhism and enlightenment going on on YouTube, and I appreciate it. Keep going. Um, the other symptoms that I've been noticing, so as we ascend into the fourth and fifth dimension, what does that look like? Well, we're actually, let me show you guys this image again. We're actually going to be mastering time. Okay, so when you have fear and pain-based reactions, think of yourself in, in a timeline and something happens that triggers you and then your reaction is based on that action. So somebody punches you in the arm and you turn around, you punch them in the arm. That's because you're living in this reactionary place of one to another. When you ascend into the fourth dimension, it means that we're outside of time as far as our emotions are concerned. So when we look at when we look at dimensions, we always have to keep in mind our our um, these dimensions, uh, our emotions. So someone punches you in the arm, and in the fourth dimension, you think you say, "Well, I could punch them in the arm back, or I could try being nice to them. I could get revenge on them later. I could punch them in the arm right now." You you see all your options for the future. Okay. And then, and then you make a decision on that. So then you're outside of time. That's, that's a step up from just, just reacting from this, like, sort of like animalistic reactionary place. When you can see options and then choose them, that's getting closer to the fourth dimension. The fifth dimension is similar to the feeling of orgasm. It's limitless joy and it's compassion and it's love and it's expansiveness. So in the fifth dimension, not only have you seen your options, but you're always choosing then the one that's in alignment with the good of all. So as we ascend into the fifth dimension, I don't know that everyone's going to come with us. I'm not trying to be fear mongering. I sometimes believe that the entire earth is on the same progression. And I feel like everyone is being called to rise up into this highest way of being. But I also think that there's a lot of people who don't necessarily have the tools or understand what it means to raise their vibration into a state of near constant joy so that they can be more solidified in these higher ways of being. I think there's people who have experienced a lot of fear and pain um, who can't necessarily navigate up. Now, when I think about people in my own life, the people who's, who have been kind of the most awful, who have experienced the most fear and pain and who have also spread it, um, are on the path of ascension. They are learning and they are growing. So I can't say for certain whether all of Earth is ascending into the fifth dimension right now or not. But I can say that every single day you will be called to make decisions that are going to affect your progress. And these decisions are going to be how do you respond? Do you respond from a place of submission to the divine plan, of letting go of your ego? Do you respond from compassion, from helping someone out and from, um, from being kind? Or do you respond from a greed-based perspective or a pain-based perspective where you want to cause um, pain in somebody else? Every single day, you have the opportunity to make these choices. And this is going to be changing your reality. The, 
the more you can listen to your true heart, the faster and higher you will rise. And as we rise up into unconditional love and freedom, as we get higher up to this top part, this is actually the most powerful place to be in. So we were talking earlier about protection and the highest protection is compassion and love. I know that doesn't seem true because of what we've been taught on this planet, but it is true. Compassion and love protects you from all things. It actually does. If you find compassion and love in your heart, you'll be protected. And maybe not from, you know, I can't prove that this is true as far as like physical reality is concerned. Maybe someone could still punch you in the arm. But it's going to be the most protecting thing that exists. Okay? It's, you're going to be surrounded by people who are resonating on the same frequency. People who are closer to unconditional love and freedom are going to do less harm. And so the people you are surrounded by are going to be less likely to, um, to actually affect you negatively. So you also get amazing powers when you're up in this higher, when this, in these higher dimensions. When you're choosing a path of letting go of your ego, of letting go of attachment, of following divinity, of following your heart, of following your whims, of being true to your true heart, of being an authentic person, of telling the truth. These are all the keys to ascension, of changing your diet, eating, um, eating clean, eating fruits and vegetables, not eating animals. We cannot eat animals. I'm sorry, we can't. It's insanity. It's actually insanity. I, th there's, this cannot go on. You guys have to analyze your own diets. I know that some people need meat sometimes, and that's a different matter. But to have it every day, every week even, is outrageous. Please consider your consumption because you are eating death. Just think about that. You're eating murder. You're eating death. You're eating animal flesh. It's cannibalism. Truly. We're all, we're all, the, it's, the animals are the same as us. We are animals. It's not okay. If you cut meat out of your diet and you cut sugar out of your diet, those two things, you're going to experience profound and rapid growth. Drink the cleanest water you can. Eat the most fruits and vegetables you can, get regular sleep, and monitor your thoughts, and you're going to be able to really rise up into a higher way of being. You're going to be ascending into the fifth dimension. As we go through the fourth dimension, one symptom that I've been feeling a lot is um, flashbacks. Has anyone else been experiencing flashbacks of their past? I'm saying like, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, whatever, whatever before, like in the dark ages, you know, I feel like we're entering into the age of light, but we were all kind of born in the dark ages. Um, and I've been having flashbacks to those times and just remembering them. It's almost like my brain is reprocessing something that no longer applies. It's like remembering an old life that doesn't even isn't even attributed to um, my life right now. So it, they're not negative. It's, it's more just like a nostalgic thing. But I realize my brain is doing that because I'm actually shifting into a completely new way of being. And my brain is seeing how, how my memories fit in. And you can rewrite your memories. You can rewire them so that they're, um, they're actually positive. Um, this person would like to eat minerals only. Salt is the only rock that people eat. Don't think of it as a crazy thing. Many birds eat clay to get nutrients. I have many friends who want to be breathitarians. Um, and definitely, I think that the higher up we rise, our food source will change. But right now, plants are truly the best way. Jeremy says, I'm studying these flashbacks right now and meditating on each one to find out what they mean. Oh man, you mean like in your own life? Have you been going through that as well? I think salt is um, salt is a crystal, but it should be taken um, sparingly. You know, the way that we use it in food products is really bad. Does anyone have any questions? Because I talked about a lot of things, and um, 
I don't think I forgot anything that I wanted to talk about, but I'm here to answer some questions because it's a lot of dense information. You've been getting them a lot lately too? Oh my gosh. Yeah, I've been having them almost every day. I'll just clearly remember a restaurant that I used to go to as a kid or I'll clearly remember a street corner, things like that. They're not even emotionally charged. Oh, and Jeremy's having them from past lives too. So yeah, as we rise up into these higher ways of being closer to unconditional love and freedom, then we're also going to be able to access the Akashic realm and, um, and telepathy. So the higher up we're here, the we're going to be able to figure out teleportation. All of our technology is going to get better. Um, you realize social media, TV, Wi-Fi, etc. changes our frequency and prohibits growth. I think, you know, we could say it prohibits growth or we could say it's, um, we could say that it's affecting us and that we're evolving to deal with it is how I think of it. Same, same answer, but. You'd like to join Unicult for the fun of it, but is it girls only? No, there's lots of men in Unicult. Why don't you rebrand as Cult of Aphrodite? Wake her up and get some blessings. She's always there about the love stuff. <laughs> Thank you, Jupiter. Maybe I'll reach out to uh, Aphrodite. You said you see things a certain way and you're used to having things pulled away from you. You are okay with that. I've had to be because I've actually had a vision of how things should go so many times. And then it's actually not ended up working out that way, no matter what I've done. So I've had to let go of my ego attachment. I had the feeling, the memories and the abandoned house that I never lived in, but I go to in my dreams. Yep. And I think we'll be having clearer um, experiences and dreams. We'll be able to meet people in dreams, have conversations, wake up. We'll both remember the conversation, that kind of thing um, as we, as we rise up. Very beautiful, you guys. I really appreciate you all. Unicult is a collaborative effort dedicated to the promotion of joy. Join Unicult. 